In this video I've got five tips to share with you about how to avoid overworking a watercolour painting and I'm going to repaint one of my old paintings that I overworked. If you're new here and you're serious about learning to paint in watercolour please join us on Patreon where I have over 160 full-length voiced over watercolour tutorials for all levels of painters. As well as that please subscribe to this channel because I post videos like this one every week. Okay, a few weeks ago I posted a video about five things I wish I knew when I first started painting in watercolour and I showed you a few examples of my earlier paintings that were overworked. One of you said it would be great if I could repaint one of those paintings and demonstrate how I would paint it differently now and I thought what a great idea. So that's what I've done. I took this tulip painting that is heavy and laboured and I painted it again and that's what I will show you in this video. I can't show you how I painted this painting because I painted it years ago before I started filming myself but I can use it to show you what an overworked painting looks like. First of all what is an overworked painting? Watercolour is the medium of light. It's fluid, it's translucent, it's vibrant. When we talk about overworking a watercolour painting we mean a number of things. An overworked watercolour painting might show heavy layering, the luminosity and the transparency might be lost, colours might look muddy. When you look closely you might see that the brushwork shows signs of repeated and laboured strokes and you may not see the fluid and graceful movement that a watercolour painting often has. In other words the marks made by the brush might appear heavy-handed and clumsy. Let's have a look at my old painting. I have lost the transparency and the luminosity of the paint. I've used too many thick layers and too many colours. You can see where I've laboured with my brush. I've fussed with the paint too much trying to get it to do what I wanted it to do instead of accepting what it gave me. When I painted it I didn't mix any of the colours, I've used colours straight out of the tube. I've got too many hard edges and there's nowhere for the eye to rest. There are a lot of problems with it. Overworking a painting often happens in the pursuit of excessive detail which as you can see is something that I have often tried to do in the past. I've tried to refine and perfect all areas of the painting and in doing so I've lost the beauty of watercolour's suggestive nature. Now I want to be clear, watercolour doesn't have to be loose and free and splashed on the paper the way some talented artists work. You can paint in watercolour and create beautifully detailed layered paintings but there's often a fine line between creating that detail and overworking the painting. Some of you may look at this older tulip painting and prefer it to the painting that I'm about to demonstrate and that's okay because art is subjective and everybody interprets it differently. But I want you to know that this older painting lacks the freshness and luminosity that my next painting does. It feels burdened and heavy and it was painted at a time when I really didn't know what I was doing. I was painting more like an acrylic painter than a watercolourist and that's not the way I want to paint anymore. One important thing you can do to avoid overworking your painting is to not use too many colours. With the redo painting I used a triadic colour scheme, just three schmincke colours. French ultramarine, transparent yellow and ruby red. Whereas on the old painting I'm guessing I used about seven or eight different colours. A second thing you can do to avoid overworking your painting is to not make your paint layers too thick. Use light washes of colour rather than heavy pigment everywhere. A third thing you must do which is really important is to make sure your paint layers are dry before you paint another layer. I usually let the paint dry naturally and then I'll use a hair dryer to make sure that it's completely dry 
before I do any re-wetting or painting. A fourth thing to do is to paint confidently. Try not to dab with your brush over and over in the same area, unless you're working on a really detailed part. Put the paint on the paper and leave it alone, especially in those early stages. And also, don't use brushes that are too small. And a fifth thing you can do is to not work every single area of the painting with the same degree of detail. Leave some areas of the painting understated. Don't try to paint everything you see. Try to simplify things. I know that's easier said than done, and I want to devote some videos just to that topic. All right, let's have a look at some of the ways I avoided overworking the second tulip painting. I painted the petals individually because it was easier to do it that way. There were areas of white that I needed to reserve, and there were other areas of orange and yellow, as well as pink. So rather than paint an overall wash over the entire flower, I chose to paint the petals individually. Where I wanted soft edges on the paint marks, I worked on wet paper like I am here. And where I didn't need those soft edges, I worked on dry paper as I am here. When all of that was dry, it was time to paint in the pink areas. I did that on wet paper mostly, so that where the pink met the orange and yellow areas, I would get a soft blend between the colours. Okay, so this is the ruby red. The pigment code for ruby red is PV19, which is the same as permanent rose that I like to use in the Windsor & Newton range. I dab the side of my brush on some paper towel just to make sure that there's not too much pigment on there. I don't want it to run everywhere. Because there's water on the paper and there's a little bit of water mixed into the paint, the brush doesn't have to be super wet as well. I've switched down to a slightly smaller brush here too. So you can see where the pink meets the orange there, I get those soft edges. And switching back to my larger brush here because it's a larger petal, I've got water on the paper again and more of the ruby red. And what I'm looking at is the edge of the petal. I'm not concerned about what's going on here just yet. Just want to paint in that edge and get the shape of the petal right. And then I can turn my attention back to what's happening inside the petal. So now I can start to pull some of that paint down towards the bottom of the petal. I'll just get this other edge in first. Okay, then I take the paint out of my brush because I've got enough paint there on the paper and then I can start to pull that paint down. I'm going to try and leave some of the white of the paper showing here, so it's better if I work on the wet paper. Now my hope was that that would have been dark enough and I wouldn't have to put any more paint over the top, but you'll see me later on putting a little bit more paint over that to deepen the colour. I kept painting each petal in individually and I tried to get as much of the work done as I could in that first layer. I was aware that I would probably have to come back and deepen some colours here and there, but in this initial stage, I wanted to get most of the work done. This petal here is quite dark in the centre, so I tried to get the colour as dark as I could on this first layer. You can see how dark I've got it there on that first painting that I did. But on that painting, I've put the pink underneath and then I've put a darker colour over the top of it. And I'm using a larger brush here than what I would have on that first painting as well. Once I had my first layer painted in, I could see that there were areas that I did need to darken. So I gently wet the areas that I wanted to darken with some water. I'll work on the wet paper again to keep paint edges soft. 
I also don't want to completely cover the lighter areas that I've got. So I make sure that the painting is completely dry. I dry it with the hair dryer as well as waiting for it to dry. And then I use a fairly large brush to wet the area very gently. And then I use some ruby red at its full intensity and I deepen those areas where I need to go darker. On the other painting, I would have layered four or five times to get the colour as dark as I wanted it. Here I'm using my damp brush to pull some of the paint down, like I did on the first layer, but I've just got a bit more colour here. So then I could see that this little petal here needed to be darker, so I glazed another layer over the top, just on the dry paper this time. Up the top it was a little bit lighter, so I took the paint out of my brush and spread it right up to the top with the damp brush. So as I paint, I'm trying to minimise the amount of brush strokes that I use. I'm trying to keep the paper showing through the paint. I don't want to completely cover it with heavy layers of thick paint. And I also don't have to paint every little thing that I see on the reference photo. I'm going to glaze a little bit of orange just here. That's the mixture of ruby red and transparent yellow. On the other painting, I would have used pre-mixed greens, but these days I always mix green. So here I'm using French Ultramarine and I'll mix it with the transparent yellow that I've already used on the flower. Because French Ultramarine is a warm blue, when I mix it with the cool yellow, it will give me a sort of a natural looking green. When I mix it, I don't mix all the yellow into the blue because I also want two tones. So I want a lighter green and a darker green. So I've left a bit of blue there and I'll add that blue into that mixture when I need to make it darker. I painted a little bit of water onto the stem because I find it easier to paint on the wet paper than to try and rush and get the paint on there before it dries on the dry paper. So some water there helped me do that. I also wanted to fade the colour away down at the bottom. I use the green where it's a bit lighter, where there's more yellow. And I start to paint that on the wet paper. I'm using my number 8 brush, which is fairly large, and that allows me to get the paint on there quickly without fussing too much with it. Down the bottom there, I don't have as much pigment on my brush. And now I'll get some darker green, so I mix a bit more blue into the green mixture. And I'll paint this down the left hand side. There's a shadow there on the reference photo, so I paint it in while it's wet, and that keeps the edge of the shadow soft. And I run it down the left hand side. With this small unopened tulip, I worked on wet paper again. I used the same colours that I used on the main tulip. I didn't need to draw attention to this bud. You can see on the first painting that the tonal values are much the same as the larger flower. I also simplified this little flower. I didn't try to put as much detail in as I did on the first painting that I did. And with the leaves, I made them very simple. I painted on a light layer of the green mixture and then in a few areas I came back and darkened it. They hardly took any time at all. Down the bottom, I faded the colour away as I mentioned. There's no need to draw the eye all the way down to the bottom here. So I feather the paint away and I lighten it as well. It's virtually just coloured water down the bottom there. 
So with this one here, I waited until it was dry and then I painted a darker green down the middle, leaving that lighter green on the outer edges to make it look like the leaf is curled over on the sides. And that's all I did. I didn't fuss any more than that. Again, down the bottom, I take the paint out of my brush and then I soften that paint away so that it fades away virtually to nothing. I'll just get a bit more water on my brush and then I fade that edge away. To finish, I added a few extra details. I glazed some orange over this petal at the front to try and bring it forward a bit more. This is the mixture of the transparent yellow with the ruby red that warmed that petal up a bit and it also helped to bring it forward. So here I've got my brush just damp with water and I soften away the paintage. Okay, here's my first painting that I did eight years ago and here's the new painting. And I hope that you can see that I've laboured over the first painting. I've used too many colours and too many layers while I tried to record everything that I saw on my reference photo. The paint takes on an almost chalky appearance. The paint colours are too bright. You can't see the paper through the paint so it has lost its vibrancy and it looks almost like an acrylic painting. The marks I've made with the brush look hesitant to me in places and the shadows or darkest areas look really overworked. In contrast with the tulip on the right where I've used a limited palette, you can see the paper through the paint. I've still gone for a realistic look and even though I've done some layering, I didn't layer as much as I did on the first painting and that has allowed me to keep a degree of freshness. I've faded the colour away slightly on the unopened bud. It's less important and doesn't need those heavier tonal values. I also mixed the green for the leaves and stems and I faded that colour away as well towards the bottom of the painting. I also minimised the amount of brush strokes that I used on the leaves and I kept the layering to a minimum. Whenever I catch myself labouring over my painting, I force myself to stop because if I'm struggling with something, you can see that struggle on the painting when I finished. These days, I'm aware of not overstating things as much as I used to. So hopefully by not fussing, we can maintain the spontaneous and lively qualities that watercolour is known for. I have a watercolour tulip tutorial on Patreon, not the tulip painting I showed you in this video, this painting here. So if you'd like to see how I painted this one from start to finish, you can see that on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with another video for you. This top's not too sparkly, is it? Got little sparkles on it. It's fine. <coughs> oh, I was just about to talk then, and you. <clears throat> Rolling. Action. Got a hair here. Hang on. I'm Louise, and if you're new here and you're stis stisterious. Yeah. You know? Can you stop touching your hair? It's got a hair. I got a hair hanging down here. It's oh. annoying me. Is it still there? I think it's gone. Do I need to say Louise? No, I'm Louise. Or just say, and if you're new, you're if you're new here, yeah. All right, I won't say Louise. Say Louise. Oh. Say with or without. So you see your hair there? Nothing there. All right. So you want me to do it without Louise? Yeah. Tulip painting that is heavy and laboured. Let me do that again. But I started filming myself. No, that doesn't make sense. The brush strokes show such. An overworked watercolour painting, painting. An overworked watercolour painting. Go from there. Really? Go from an overworked watercolour painting. He's cranky. And that's okay because art is subject, subjective.
some of you may look at this older tulip some of you may oh let me do that again I know <laughs> not the tulip painting I showed you in this video mm. ah! Could it get going? <laughs>